already October. WTF. Honestly though, October, November, December, my favorite months of the year. So I'm stoked. Even though I'm, I'm not a spooky girl, I'm not a Halloween girl, I dislike all things uh, scary, but I do love the vibes of a good holiday season. So we're gonna get started with my favorite products that I tried slash was using for the month of September. I mean, it was haywire with all of the holiday launches. This is very normal. It's always like every year, oh my gosh, why is holiday stuff out? It's been this way for years. September and October are big for the holiday launches. So just prepare yourself. There's gonna be a little bit more and then November, December launches themselves will slow down and then sales will pick up. So and that's normally how the season goes in that front. So I tried a lot and normally I feel like during the holiday seasons is when these brands come out with their best stuff. So it was pretty hard to narrow things down. But first, I do have a skincare item that I want to share with you. This is, it's expensive and first of all, I'm not a skincare expert, so don't listen to what I have to say pretty much, but I'm gonna tell you what I like. I have heard that Charlotte Tilbury skincare is nothing special and it's overpriced, and I'm not gonna disagree with that. However, her skincare works phenomenal for my skin type, so if it works, I'm gonna use it, and thankfully, you know, I do receive some stuff in PR. But her magic cream is something that I will put the big bucks down of my own money for. She launched this new magic water cream. And I've got to admit, you guys, this is really, really stinking good. It's more of a gel consistency compared to the magic cream. Uh, but what I like about this is one of the biggest marketing points in this is, is it's supposed to keep your skin hydrated for 100 hours, which... um. It's crazy claim right there. But anyways, I kind of see where she was going with that claim. I personally cannot confirm 100 hours, but I feel like all day when I wear this moisturizer, it feels as though it was freshly applied to my skin. So if you have dry skin, this is really great because it is a very deep hydration without feeling too heavy, but all day you touch your face and it feels like you just applied moisturizer. So yeah, 100 hours of lasting hydration IDK, but all day my skin feels freshly hydrated, so I think that's incredible. And my skin is so, oh jeez, my skin is so sensitive to moisturizers. I have to hold my breath every time I try a new moisturizer because I get my most cystic, painful, big, hard red <laughs> zits when I try a new moisturizer. Sometimes my skin just won't agree with it. I've been using this for a week and a half now, every single day, even longer than that probably, no breakouts. So I am loving this. If you do have a more affordable alternative that kind of has those details that I was describing as just making your skin feel freshly hydrated all day, let me know. I'd love to hear some affordable alternatives. Okay, let's get into the makeups. I tried a lot of good complexion products, but not many were like better than my favorites kind of thing, except for this. This one is so good. So this is from Gucci Beauty, and this is the multi-use long wear concealer. It is so lightweight on the under eyes. I feel like it will be great for mature skin, though I have had some of you with mature skin say that this didn't last or look very good after somewhere, but I've also had some people with mature skin say that this blurred the under eyes for them. So unfortunately I've heard two sides, but I do think it will work great for mature under eyes. So this one I like because it feels so soft on the under eyes and I feel like it almost has a semi powder kind of dry down, which I think kind of smooths and blurs the under eyes. It is almost self setting. I still would recommend a very light amount of powder to set, but it has a dry down that leaves a blurred finish because it's almost semi powder like. It gives a medium coverage, not true, true medium. I feel like of all the new concealers that launched, this one is on the lighter side of coverage, but it still gives that medium coverage there. But yeah, the finish, it's like powdery almost, so it's blurring, but I don't find it to be drying at all, and it feels super lightweight. So this is very, very expensive. 
I did a whole new concealer video if you want to check that out to see which concealer is best for you because I felt like they were all very different from one another but this one is definitely one of my favorites that has launched and it's one of the most unique out of those like I believe there was like seven of them so I've been loving this one next up now at first impressions I didn't love this so I wanted to update you I stinking love this. So this is from Rare Beauty. This is their flexible lifting gel. And yeah, my brows have been looking incredible every time I've been wearing this brow gel. It takes a few times of me combing through to get my brows where I want them to be, but I do love the way that the spoolie separates the brows, which gives somewhat of a thicker effect. And it takes a little bit longer for the brows to dry down, which can be a good thing because you do have some play time to reshape the brows. But once it's set down, these brows are not going anywhere. And it also doesn't have a super hard dry down. So it's holding the brows in place very strong, but it doesn't feel like you have a cast over your eyebrows. So I've really been enjoying this. This is great for shaping the brows, lifting the brows, giving them a somewhat laminated look. So yeah, my brows have also been getting a lot of compliments from you guys. And I think it's because I've been using this one a lot. It's very similar to the Too Faced one that you guys know I love so much. Uh, but there are some differences. Like this one doesn't dry quite as hard. And I feel like I do have to brush my brow hairs a little bit more because the spoolie is so much smaller, but very, very similar effect. The cheek palettes that I've launched. <laughs> okay, first of all, you guys knew. You knew this was gonna be in here. Every single one of the new Hourglass Ambient Lighting Edit Palette is going to be in my favorites. And I have been using all three. I'm here to share with you which one my favorite was, my least favorite was. And honestly, it's the same as the review. It stuck true. I just find myself reaching for the, the one that comes with the leopard packaging right here. I love this one and it's funny because this one had the most amount of repeats however the shades in here are just what I tend to reach for I find the bronzer to be the most flattering on me the blushes are colors that I use the most so this one on my light light medium skin tone is my favorite however I haven't been short with using my jellyfish either so this one has also been a very nice one to use I've been enjoying this highlight a lot now the snake one is the one for me I found the least flattering on my skin tone it's just made for medium to deeper complexions it doesn't look as great on me however i have been enjoying the blushes in here using a very very light hand this one is very very unique but i do have to be very careful so this one it's not made for my skin tone so for that reason it's not my favorite but if you have a skin tone that that would look good on you're going to love that one so i have been enjoying having this in my current speed reviews currently testing drawer because it's such a great excuse to be able to reach for these I almost need to get these out of the drawer ASAP so that I can use some other palettes. Like this one, which is not as good as the Hourglass, but it definitely, in its own right, is a very special palette. So I did review the new NARS Holiday Collection if you want to check that video out. The eyeshadow palette in that collection, mm, I've already forgot about it, to be honest. A forgettable launch. But the All That Glitters Light Reflecting Cheek Palette is one of my favorites from NARS. It's one of my favorites. Actually, it is my favorite formula. It's this kind of, not baked gelée, but it is baked here, but they still give a lot of pigment because their true baked gelée formula, to me, doesn't give enough pigment. It's a little bit finicky. These I love because each of the shades look very different on the cheek, and they give such a beautiful glow to the cheek, but they're not that super hard-pressed gel, so you get a lot of pigment with this. I used this highlight today. I love this highlight, and then you have four blushes, and they do not come out with enough palettes of this formula. The last big six pan that they launched with this formula was like two years ago or something like that. It's been a while. And I think you guys told me that they did launch a quad, but they've wasted their time launching that baked gelée formula so often because I just don't like it as much. 
I love this one and not that they need to listen to me but I feel like the general consensus is we like this formula so this formula is fantastic from NARS you know unfortunately it's been directly competing with my all-time favorite makeup launch every single year but it's it's like right below the slot below I'm still very excited about this NARS does create consistently good quality while some of the formulas can be different and I do have preferences in those different formulas it's always good quality. This one is great. Definitely worth the money if this is something that you are interested in. I love a good cheek palette and I'm really, really happy with this one. And this one is one of the newer items that I've tried that's in this favorites, but it's so good I knew it had to be in. Okay, so for eyes, I have one eyeshadow stick. You guys know the market has been crazy with eyeshadow sticks. And this Rare Beauty, all of the above weightless eyeshadow stick in well-being has been a favorite of mine. This one is very, very nice. Now, in terms of wear and creasing, it wears extremely well. I do have this one crease, right? And I do find that this eyeshadow will constantly have this one crease right here, but nothing else gets bothered. It just stays put. I'm sure it's hard for a cream product to not kind of sink into there. So it's okay. That's the anatomy of my body because the rest of the eyelid area remains untouched and unbothered. And this shade in particular is what I'm talking about. This is the only shade I have, but it's such a pretty eye-opening, eye-awakening shade. Great for every day, great and quick doesn't fade throughout the day. So at first when I tried this, I just wasn't sure. I couldn't really report back to you, but I'm here to say love the way that this wears and love this color. I have two eyeshadows. Honestly, I'm not really sure yet how the eyeshadow rankings video for this month is going to pan out because a lot has launched and I'm going to take a couple weeks before that video comes out most likely because I want to test and compare some formulas for a little while longer. But these are two palettes for different reasons that I have been loving this month. I don't know if they'll be one and two. I really don't. But these have been reliable throughout the month. So the first one is from Viseart. This is the Koyish Eaton Dew palette. So randomly amazing. I mean, maybe not so random because I do love my Viseart palettes, but this one it's just like 100% amazing quality here and it looks a little intimidating especially for somebody like me who doesn't reach toward color very often on the daily just you know for my videos and stuff but a color store like this can have a lot of room for error quality wise and Viseart hit it out the park with this formula so it still has that base of the original Koi formula, just a little bit more amped up in pigment, right? So if you have the original Koi from Viseart, those are kind of more pastel -y sheer shades that are great for layering. These have a little bit more pigment to them, but they still aren't crazy in pigment, you know? So it'll still be vibrant on the eyes, but it's very easy to work with, very easy to blend. I don't need to use a wet brush. These apply great dry on their own. I've done a couple beautiful looks, and surprisingly, this color story, it doesn't look the most approachable, but it actually really is. It's not intimidating whatsoever in the color world. So I used it for today's look. I just wanted to create a classic purple look, something that I love and would wear out consistently and it's super easy. This you can pair with other palettes, other matte colors, stuff like that, but even though this palette doesn't have any matte shades, you don't need a matte shade. I do not have a single matte shade on my eye and I still created a gorgeous look. So I use this shade in the outer third of my lid, blended that a little bit also on the lower lash line. Center of the lid, I just used this shade. It has a little bit of a bluish shift that I thought would add a pretty pop in the center of the lid. And then I used this light shade on the inner corner and I did the same thing on the lower lash line. So super simple, easy look, minimal fallout, pretty high impact. You know, it's not the most pigmented formula, but that's how it's intended to look on the eyelid almost somewhat kind of watercolory, but with a little bit more amped up. I've been loving this formula. It's very, very luxurious. So if you're interested in this color story, I definitely recommend it. Fizier killed it with that one. And then another great one. It's one of my favorites. 
in this video because it's one of my most used items. Again, I don't know how the lineup is going to play out because the color story, she's kind of boring. She is boring. She's not kind of boring. But the formula, Lux. So this is the Patrick Ta Major Dimension 3 palette. And it's just a palette of essential eyeshadow shades. The colors are very pigmented, very buttery, and I find them extremely easy to use. I did a whole short comparing them to the Makeup by Mario palette because that one is super viral. And I said, you know, this one is a premium price, but I genuinely believe you are getting premium quality. I find the quality quite similar to Vizzy Art. And you know, I've been asked, okay, how about Patrick Ta versus Vizzy Art? I'm going to stick with Viseart, but this one is a more buttery formula, so it depends on what your preferences are. And this one still deserves a moment of attention because it is premium quality and really great stable colors. This is something that you can just keep at your makeup desk. If you just need like a light shade to set under the brows, you need a quick shade to use as eyeliner, a little bit of deepening in the outer corner. That is what this is great for. So I've very much enjoyed this. This is going to be a palette that honestly I don't think about a lot, but I will reach for it a lot just for one or two shades. So that I think makes it a very important player in the game. So I'm happy with this and I've been using it a lot this month in the way that I just mentioned of not thinking about it, but reaching just for convenience. So yeah, it deserves a spot in here. I think you did a great job. Finishing off with lips, oh my goodness. So not too recently, but semi-recently, Jones Road expanded their lip pencil line. If they even had any to begin with, I can't remember, but I've officially decided if it comes in pencil form, Jones Road is going to do the best job out of any brand. Their pencil eyeliner is called The Best Pencil. It is actually the best pencil liner. And I kind of am feeling the same way about these lip liners. So first of all, this range of colors specifically that they launched, Nude Rose, Nudist, Mauve, and Nude Pink, the perfect Your Lips but better shade. I have the shade Mauve on right now. So these are just perfect for overlining the lips a little bit, but it still looks very natural. The shades are the best for that your lips but better kind of look. And I love the consistency that Bobbi Brown created these to have because they're dry. I love a dry lip pencil. You have so much control with these. So these have been my go-to everyday lip liners because the colors are perfection and the formula is what I love. And then I have a couple glowy, comfortable lip style products. So first of all, this was encouraged mostly by TikTok, my TikTok viewers, but a lot of you guys have also suggested this to me. This is the Summer Fridays Lip Butter Balm. I just got the shade Vanilla, just the classic clear one. I see what you mean. It's extremely hydrating, but it also just looks like a gloss. So you're getting a double whammy there because I do feel like even though you would expect glosses to be hydrating, they're, they're not. They do kind of dry out the lips, but this one is legitimately like a lip balm, but it looks like a gloss. So I definitely want to try some other colors. I've been enjoying just throwing this on with one of my Jones Road lip liners, and it's such a pretty natural look, and it makes the lips look so juicy. It kind of smooths over those lines on the lips. And then another, I would say this is pretty hydrating for the lips as well. This is a beautiful lip oil formula. This is the Milk Makeup Odyssey Lip Oil Formulation. They have a whole range of colors, some fun, some neutral. I do have some colors that I haven't broken into because I've just been using this color so much, Quest. It's what I have on right now with the Mauve Jones Road lip liner, and I think this is very hydrating. It is a lip oil, has the perfect amount of color. It's not sticky, but it is thick enough to where I feel like it does have a lot more longevity compared to a number of other lip oils that I've used. And it's thick enough, but it's not sticky and it's quite comfortable. So it doesn't feel too thick or like too gloopy on the lips. It's just honestly, I would say the perfect lip oil formulation. To me, it feels a little closer to a lip gloss than an actual lip oil. It's very different than the Dior. It's a lot less thick feeling on the lips, but it's gorgeous and I can't wait to play with more colors. I've been using this one a lot. And the other shade that I use, this shade is not on my favorites, by the way, it is not flattering. But even though this shade Globetrot 
I hated the way it looked on me. It just wasn't flattering. I could tell instantly that I was going to love this formula. So even with an ugly color, I was like, but I know the formula is going to be good. So yeah, I have to play with more colors, but I've been enjoying this lip oil a lot. And there we have it, you guys. Those are all of my favorite beauty products for the month of September. It's only going to get crazier with the more launches that I've tried, but I have been falling back on these. So I will have these all linked down below in the description box for you guys for easy access to check any of these out. And um, yeah, um, make sure you like this video and, sub and subscribe to my channel. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one. Thank <laughs> you.